All right, so ah, uh, yeah. So my story today is about a new ballot initiative that is hopefully going to be on the ballot in Colorado that will allow medical marijuana patients to obtain concealed carry permits for firearms. Um, since you know, probably going back to even the 1996 uh, Prop Prop 215 days in California and all the early medical laws, there's always been a question of does a medical marijuana card or recommendation negate the lawful the unlawful drug use statute um or the the option on the atf form that you fill out when you go to to purchase a firearm and, and submit to a background check um so the group in colorado is uh named guns for everyone and uh, they see marijuana as a low-hanging fruit for uh for second amendment advocacy uh, and they say that they have some pretty good consensus among both gun store owners and dispensary owners. That's uh, shifted a little bit now that cannabis use and uh, the presence of dispensaries has become more normalized in the past 10 years in Colorado. Um, so they're hoping they have actually a meeting today with the Secretary of State to get final approval for the initiative to appear on the ballot. And if it does, then it'll uh, it'll appear at the end of the year. This is one of the first states uh, that is actually proactively protecting uh, cannabis users' right to buy and, and possess firearms. Uh, the other one that very notably comes to my mind is is Oklahoma's law a couple years ago that it wasn't intended necessarily to protect cannabis users' rights uh, to own guns. It was just meant to... Uh, basically not restrict any type of gun ownership in Oklahoma by any federal agency order, administrative action, executive order, anything like that. And unintentionally, the ATF's position statement that uh, cannabis use is still considered unlawful fell under that. So unintentionally, medical marijuana users in Oklahoma are allowed to possess firearms based on that statute. Um, so yeah, um, I guess we'll see what happens. First of all, whether this even makes it on the ballot, and then once it does get on the ballot, whether it passes. Um, as somebody that grew up in Colorado, I, I feel like this is something that is going to pass. Uh, it's always been a very purple state, if you will, um, a place where people believe both in their right to consume cannabis and the privacy of their home and to own firearms. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, and I'm very interested in hearing what the rest of the team thinks. I, I just hope this gets on the ballot. I think this is an so, issue huh? that Lauren uh, that Lauren Bobert should uh, should take up. Oh, that would be amazing <laughs> if she did. Oh, I this is right that. up her alley. I would love that. That would be amazing if she started is, a campaign for this. This is really really important. I mean, this is this is a right as an American to yep, have exactly. your own firearms, and just because you use cannabis, you shouldn't be having that right taken away. This mm -hmm. is this is huge. I, I mean, Dale, maybe you can jump in, excuse me, as the attorney, but this is really a 10th Amendment issue, right? Are we actually allowing states to determine what is lawful activity within their state or not? Or is a law like Amendment 64 in Colorado, which says anybody over the age of 21 is allowed to possess and consume cannabis, can the federal government just on their own decide? You, you cut out so hum. You cut out right there for a second. Oh, I don't know. I just went on yeah. mute for a second. I don't know why. Weird. Um, but yeah, I guess the question is, can the federal government decide that this is still considered unlawful and, you know, take away a fundamental constitutional right? Well, at this point, under federal law, it is unlawful to possess cannabis, which is a Schedule One drug, uh, while you're in possession of a firearm. This, this deals with Colorado law and a concealed weapons law, which is definitely a state law. And I, I can see a split here of authority where the state would say it's okay for you to carry a gun, a concealed weapon, while you're possessing cannabis, but the feds could walk in and arrest you and charge you federally. And then you have a Second Amendment missing match here, okay? Because the, the, the Constitution applies to the state uh, to the post-Civil War amendments where they applied, the Second Amendment applies directly to the state, they can't make a law which restricts your ability to keep and, fair and, keep and bear arms. That's going to be the no. pissing match. No, um, now this is what I, I this is my history. actually add on to that, Dale, is the reason is I don't really feel this is a Tenth Amendment issue, uh, Soham, is because the Tenth Amendment basically states that uh, 
it's the states are sovereign and reserve the right to regulate and make their own laws of things that the feds don't regulate and make their own laws. Now, from the beginning, the feds have regulated firearm possession and use, and they made, with the Second Amendment, allowed it and allowed it in certain circumstances. So that's why you don't have really a Tenth Amendment issue here, because this was already federally regulated from the rip. So, but... It is. I think that I think the other side of the argument, because it was federally regulated from the beginning, that is where you really attack this from, because the the founders did not make any kind of stipulation on whether or not you used a medicine or whether or not you had an ailment, uh, if that made you or barred you from possessing a firearm. So all that stuff was created after the fact. I think that's the that's the argument that you that you go here. Instead of using the tenth amendment, you would really attack it using the second amendment. Yeah, I, I would really like to see the NRA step in and and uh, and, and endorse this, and maybe even put some money in. Uh, uh, they got their own problems right now, gathering. Jason. I'm just saying that's what I would like the to see. NRA got they they're working through their own problems right now. <laughs> yeah. Man, Wayne, and I mean the, the, the NRA is way I mean, way beyond a just a gun. Some gun new allies on their team, exactly. Exactly. Well, but this is the reason why so many of my veteran clients never wanted to get one of those medical marijuana cards and be mm -hmm. on paper yep. as, you know, using cannabis, because there's a question here. I, I don't know the answer to it, honestly. I mean, a lot of attorneys are going to make a lot of money trying to figure this out because you do have the, t the Tenth Amendment might be applicable here because... Any, any power that's not specifically given to the federal government or prevented from the states, the states have that power, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? Because the, the grant of authority to keep and bear arms is an amendment to the Constitution. It's not a specific grant for the federal government. It's a prohibition from the government doing certain things. Okay? So you just see the layers of shit happening here. And... People who are into the gun industry don't want to admit that they smoke weed like it was bad admitting you were gay in the 60s, okay? Mm -hmm. They don't want to get in the middle of that because they know the problems involved here, um, and I really don't have an answer. I have clients that hire uh, security companies to come in, and those security guards are armed, mm -hmm. okay? And I don't know the answer to that because you're in close proximity to a Schedule One drug with a gun. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point, Joe. That, that, that's actually a very good point. And then you could even go a little bit further and say, like, if the gun, see, a lot of ways the feds regulate this too is because the guns and a lot of the parts and bullets and stuff are made from outside of the state, right? So that would, would be an interesting argument is if the gun completely was assembled, manufactured, built, and bullets and everything were done inside of Colorado, what would be the answer then? That's an interesting part. Yes, but uh, we we got to say we have Congress clause authority, so we're taking it. Did you have something to say? Uh, you, you, you were saying Soham. No, no. Oh, okay. All right, we're gonna keep this. We're gonna keep we this. To, we 